uh, introduce the students, staff members. Steve. Scott, where are you? You want to come up? Oh, he's on. Scott's helping in the sound booth. So he is a very gifted person, but he's not on the present, so I'm going to let him go there. Yeah. Oh, here he comes. Okay. The first thing I want to announce to you this morning is, you know, Scott uh, has finished his MDiv degree, but he needed to complete his course of study with the United Methodists, and he has completed the course of study. And so, yeah, that's it. So from uh, this point on, uh, uh, Glenn Conway, our, our superintendent, has given the letter authorizing him to administer the sacraments and for, perform here in this location all of the duties of a, of a consecrated pastor. So we're very grateful for that. And Scott, congratulations for that. <laughs> well, talking about technician, I want to explain the reason why I have my robe on. It's nothing holy. I tore my pants. <laughs> and then this is a true story. You think, what could be worse than an equipment failure on Sunday morning? When you got to stand up in front of people, I'll tell you what's worse. Thought I could remedy it with a pin. Stuck myself in the stomach so hard, I have big blood stains all over my white shirt. So we thank God for holy coverings today. Next week, you won't be, God being my helper, see me in a row, but this week, I'm really glad I have one. Okay, so anyway, uh, Debbie, where are you? There you are, you switched up. This is Deb Monjardo, and uh, Deb has been a teacher for 37 years, decorated as high as you could be decorated as a teacher. She taught elementary education. Another interesting fact about Debbie is she's a National Geographic scholar. I think this is where the, we should have had a cue card where the congregation says, ooh, ready? Ooh, okay, yeah, that's good. And uh, Deb has been a part recently. She's retired after 37 years, and, uh, and she is a curriculum expert, really, she is. And, uh, that's what I call her because she knows all of these resources. She's honestly, she's got so much. She's been part of a church planting team recently. And it was on my heart. She has such a heart for, for mission and ministry among women in the church that I thought it would be just great if we had an engine like that. And so she replaces the slot where Pastor Scott was. Pastor Scott has stood up to the slot where Paul is. And now Deb will be our director of discipleship ministries, leadership and small group resources, and also she's going to participate widely in our women's ministry. So Deb Monjardo, her husband's name is Steve. Is Steve here today? No. Okay. Uh, maybe by third service. But you'll meet Steve soon. And I want you to give a, a round of uh, applause and a welcome to Debbie Monjardo. We're going to ask if, oh, I should say one more thing. I, I, I wasn't wholly clean about this staff appointment, 
Coach Gary Turk, uh, I wanted to bring in Joe. He's a ringer on the softball team, <laughs> a great home run hitter. Is that okay, too? All right. But we want you to uh, come and pray for them this morning, so I'm going to ask them to kneel, and if you'll come and just lay hands of love and the Holy Spirit on them, and uh, let's welcome them to Trinity with uh, uh, a time of prayer and holy worship this morning. And what I love is to have uh, a couple, a couple laity also, you know, pray and, and thank God for them and ask the Lord to be with them, and then I'll close this in prayer. Okay? Let's pray together. Lord, now we give our new staff to you. We're so grateful that trekking alongside of Mike will be a full-time worker for the children as well. We thank you for all that you're doing, Lord. And we thank you for, uh, for Kim's work that she's going to be doing. We thank you also for the Ralphs, Lord. What a, what a tremendous engine they are in this body called Trinity for the gospel. We thank you for Deb, Lord, and what she's doing. And Scott is laying his hand on Deb, and they are the assistant assistants in the church and uh, for a great and glorious ministry. Now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon them, commission them, and may they serve the Lord with gladness all of their days here in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you this morning. God bless you. All right, as these are making their way back to their seats, did anyone notice anything different about the bulletin this week? Maybe you 945 or Donuts ever opened the bulletin. Oh. Back. Yeah, there's this little uh, tear off. If you open up your bulletin, this little tear off that Andy's been working on in the office. Uh, we want to encourage you all to fill this out and drop it in the offering plate. You can start doing that now. So we're going to take offering in a minute. So just, this isn't because we want to check up on you and see who's here and who's not here. This is because we want to give you all an opportunity to, to directly plug into what the pastoral staff is doing. And so, you know, let us know that you're here. But then flip it over on the back. And there's an opportunity to, to list any prayer requests, concerns, uh, things you want us to be aware of so that we can stand with you and, and minister with you. Uh, that's our heart, is to be able to love on you all better. We're doing this because we care about you. So if you can help us help you, everybody wins. Um, so go ahead and fill those out and get ready to drop them in the offering. Coming up in a couple weeks on October 3rd, we're going to be kicking off our Fall Engage series. Uh, it's going to be an every Wednesday night program where we come in and we share a meal together starting at 6 o'clock. You don't have to register or sign up online or anything like that. Just come on out on Wednesday nights, starting October 3rd. Have a meal together, and then after the meal, we're going to uh, share a Bible study up here for adults and maybe you, and they want to come and join us. Uh, and downstairs, we're going to be having a program for the kids. And so Kim's already working hard on that. And uh, if you'd like to be a part of, of any of that and the, the working out of that, talk to me or Pastor Ron. We'll get you plugged in to help serve in that area. But October 3rd, Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, starting with dinner downstairs. We hope you can make it. Uh, we saw a video for men's and women, or for women's retreat. Just want you to be aware that a men's retreat and a women's retreat are coming up. You can find out more information about those on the website. I know it's only September, but it's already time to start thinking about a men's retreat in January and women's retreat in, in May. So, you can find out more information. 
is the trustee work party. So we're already starting to plan that. <coughs> Oh, Donnie boy.
Scott was going to read scripture, but I'm going to, I'm going to read it now. Uh, he's, he's in the back doing double duty. You know, we have a, a motion on the floor for a new sound system. And I tell you, it's, it's acting like a buck and bronco this morning. So, uh, and yesterday during, during the wedding even. Uh, so I think that's why you've got several sound crew guys back there. But uh, I ask your, your patience for that. Acts chapter 2 is the scripture lesson. I'd like to open up the, the word of God to that. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind. One of the translations says a mighty rushing wind. Came from heaven, filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated, came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then going down, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above, signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to thank uh, Mike and Faith for putting the visuals in the narthex. Uh, that was to represent the sermon series that we're going to be working on and the theme we're going to be thinking about this fall. It's taken from uh, the director of the Brooklyn Tabernacles book that he wrote several years ago called Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. And so we asked him if we could use the title and certain things from the book because uh, it's a glorious theme. The church found fresh wind, and the wind in the, in the Scripture, especially in the Hebrew uh, writings, which were the Old Testament, was synonymous. That wind was synonymous with the word spirit. And so the rushing wind came, and God's spirit fell upon his people. Like no other time in history, there at Pentecost, the Spirit fell on God's people, and they were empowered. Simon Peter went out and preached a sermon right after Pentecost, and 3,000 people gave their hearts to Jesus Christ. It was like a Billy Graham crusade, only unscheduled, just out in the open market. And so the people of the Lord experienced glorious things, lay people, and then there were those who are called the apostles. And the translation in the Greek to, to the English here, uh, in American English, is ones who are being sent. The apostles, just translated ones who are being sent. Now, that was used for the people who were in the ordained ministry. The people who were part of the local church in location they were called the saints. I know with uh, a lot of uh, other traditions, denominational traditions, they have different definitions for the word saint. But the definition from the Greek to the English for the word saint, saint simply means ones who are being made holy by Christ. Just ones who are being made holy. So you have ones who are being sent and ones who are being made holy. And the Holy Spirit fell on all of those that were gathered there. Last night, I want to say, David and Sally, uh, what a glorious time it was with the Enviro One people. And uh, I, I went at 7, but by 9, it, it kept on building. I left the party at 9, 
and came home. But I missed, I think I missed the vast majority. I mean, there were dancers that were taking place after that. They had a silent auction. We had so many of the Sierra Leone's people that were here uh, celebrating who have, have come to America and are, are uh, working at jobs and raising families here. It was, uh, whoop, you, you turned me off on that one. <laughs> Could I get back on? Uh, or did the channel go out, Rich? Okay. Would you, that's what's been happening. Our channels have been, have been blowing out on this thing. Can you hear me? Yes. How about the back row? Can, oh, oh, I just came on. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll just go with it, that's for sure. And so they were empowered to begin to do the work of God. But last night seemed like a homecoming. Uh, Pastor Glenn and Holly were here. Brother Tim, uh, he gave uh, a message, and I'm sure it was a glorious message. I, uh, I came back at nine so I could practice my message here. In this last week, we had a chance to uh, get a look at the body of Christ because the bishop called all of the pastors together. And also the bishop called all of the laity that wanted to participate down in uh, Linwood together for an evening. And so I was with him on both of those days. And he showed a video. And I'm going to borrow that video and plug in here. But the great question of the church is, do you want to live out of the purpose and the plan and the power of what God wants to do with you, the people of God? And do I want to live out of the power, the purpose, and the plan of God wants to do. Now, in order to answer that question, there, become two, there becomes two dividing categories. You see, the church has a what. It's who the church is, where the church is, what are the dimensions of the church, what are, what are the things like their budgetary resources. The what would be what Trinity is, in this moment, what Trinity has been, and when we think of, of all of Trinity, how many have come to Trinity in the last 10 years? Raise your hands. Okay, the vast majority. How many have been here 15 to 20 years? Raise your hands. And then there are some hands that have been here more than 30 years. Raise your hands. Yeah. So, in the past, Trinity has had, uh, I'm taking this from Brother Doug Brown's uh, address that he'd given. 70, wasn't that what we said? 70 pastors. So I am uh, number 70. And now that doesn't include the, all of the staff members, but it's been a pretty, pretty broad picture. Not so much before I got here. 41 years, one pastoral change. And then now you'll get a series. So that means, think of that, 41 years, uh, one pastoral change, but seven, uh, you know, let's say 67 prior to that, and now number 70. All of that is the what? The building used to be on Main Street, now the building's here. And we're hoping that the building increases. That's the what? But the bishop wanted to challenge the laity and wanted to challenge the clergy on thinking about something beyond the what? And so I'm going to show a little video. This is a guy who's a stand-up comic. His name is Mike. Mike thought there would be real power in the meetings where he was doing his stand-up comedy if he could just get to know the people because he felt like the people out there had a tremendous story to tell. And so he just ups and asks somebody to sing right out of the audience because they said they taught music. And here's the result. This is a fantastic little piece of video to go along with the sermon. I want you to, I want you to see it, and we're praying we have it. Right, Scott? All right, here we go. For those that don't know, Michael Jordan's break time is exactly that. In the middle of my stand-up comedy, I stop doing it, sit down, and just kick it with the people. Check it out. Just some random dude. I don't even know who he is. We just start kicking it, and look what happens. Let me talk to the brother right here. Yeah, yeah. What's your name, bro? Daryl. I'm gonna need you to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> 
For real, you're scaring the white people. You can't do that, Daryl. I'm sorry, bro. You're scaring me too, though. <laughs> wow. Well, what do you do for a living, Daryl? I work at Oak Ridge Military Academy. I'm the music director there. Musical director at Oak Ridge Musical Grand. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You got a deep voice, man. I, I would not want to get you, man. Jonathan, come here. You're like, oh, snap. Nine Jonathans show up. <laughs> Amazing, dude. <laughs> so you're a musical director. Yes, sir. All right, so um, let me get a couple. Let me get a couple bars of like uh, Amazing Grace. Can you do the first part of that. We didn't plan this. Just see, I know we didn't. We didn't plan this at all. I'm just randomly talking. Go ahead. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved. So after he did that, the bishop of our annual conference stood up and he said, you see, when, when they just introduced the what about Daryl, he's, he's a teacher. And can he sing? He sang. But then when he added all of the circumstances of life behind it, let's talk about life as it really is, really where the people are, where, where you are, where I am. Sing for that. And the song sounded totally, totally different, didn't it? You see, we worship at Trinity, but many times we come to do the what. So we play in the praise band, or I got a sermon, bloody white shirt under a robe. You know, the regular business as usual. Amplifiers blowing while we're doing worship. Just business as usual, you know. And uh, it's the what. It's the what. It's almost if, as if Jesus one day said, I'm, I'm going to crash it, going to crash the what? And uh, I'm going to heaven. Man, what do you do? First of all, it's, that left everybody in a panic because who can follow up Jesus? Who? Who can follow Jesus? But he ascended and he left it to the 11 because one had already thought Jesus' plan wasn't such a good plan, and he defected, sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. All of this is the what. Then, really, Simon Peter was the best they had, and they're going to bring in another guy, the Apostle Paul, but they're not even going to be there in Jerusalem. They're going out to the... Who knows where? Place after place after place. Jesus crashed their what? But then he gave them something to reach for. It was the why. And the why is this, because I came. 
if you'll be open and be filled with my spirit, each one of you are going to be a part. Christianity never could have survived. And let's use the Trinity model. If they didn't encounter, engage, and empower people to do what? Have an explosion by one. Fresh wind and fresh fire. Until a Christian can reproduce himself or herself, there's not a future generation. The church would have been stillborn. But Jesus invested his lifeblood on the plan. And in the Holy Spirit, there's fresh wind and fresh fire. I remember, I think I've told you this, Jim Cimbala was going to come and speak at Wesley Biblical Seminary because he found something. It was all about the what in the church. And then he found the why. Why does the church exist? And he kind of reinvented a church by saying, what if instead of Sunday morning worship being the central thing, what if the people praying was the center? And they made the prayer meeting the center, and they grew the most dynamic church in Brooklyn. He was supposed to come on 9-11 to speak to our seminary. But when 9-11 took place, they were having the prayer meeting, and they were standing one week, 19 blocks, waiting to get into the prayer meeting, and the next week, 16 blocks. And he said, we've decided, Ron, until something changes to business as usual, we're, we're not going anywhere. We're staying right here in New York City. Well, what a beautiful thing. What's the difference between the what and the why? It's the difference between Daryl singing Amazing Grace the first time and singing Amazing Grace the second time. Jesus refused to allow the what to be the reason for the people of God. He changed it. Do you know in Acts chapter 2, there's one verse that almost goes unnoticed. And you have to translate it from the Greek to the English properly before people sitting in the pews can really get what's going on. And the verse says this, they continued steadfastly in the teaching of the apostles. Now, that's not going to mean anything to you or me, but when you translate it, it says this, they continued in the Didache. That means the conglomerate of teachings. If this was Trinity, it would say they continued steadfastly in parts of all of the 70 pastors you've had. They continued steadfastly in the teaching, and here it is. Apostle simply means this. In its Greek to American or to English translation, it means the sent ones. They continued steadfastly in the teachings of the ones who were sent to them. You realize Jesus made that the great divide on Judgment Day? I don't even like that. But he did. He said, uh, if you get them, you get me. And how you treat them, you treat me. And he said, and there are going to be a good many people at the end. If you don't receive them, you don't receive me. And do you know that's where the phrase comes on Judgment Day? The division between the sheep and the goats, and as much as you've done to them, you've done to me, so a day may be coming when I look at you and say, depart from me. I never knew you. Wow! Man, don't you think that puts a little uh, weight on my back on how I interact with you? And I want to tell you, I've missed it. Over a lifetime of 42 years, there have been times I've missed it. But we have a glorious God. You know what he says? My strength will be made perfect in your weakness. He knew he was choosing people that are everyday people. And he knew that that would be the future of the church. Do you know something? He's winning. Jesus Christ is winning. You have all of the resources necessary. I could call Daryl's out of the crowd, and, and all three congregations, they'd be right there. You have all of the talent. You've got all of the resources. If you just simply give it to God and let God empower you, 
You are the saints of God, the ones he's making holy so that the church he raises through you will never, never, never fail. Well, that's a, that's a big enough truth where I'd love to hear an amen on that one. You know what amen means, so be it. Do we have one today? Is there an amen on that? Yes, so be it, Lord. Empower all of us who are here to play such a role that the church won't fail. Do you know if you are positive and move forward and dedicate yourself not to any single person, but to the plan and the purpose, the why of Jesus Christ, if you'll do that, the church will go forward. But if you don't want the church to go forward, the church won't go forward, and so it's the why. Yeah, I feel like doing the village boys, huh? Yeah, it's the why. Never mind. It, at least, will you, just, will you just live with me and do just the why? The, just the why? Let's see the why. Why, Lord? If you can help me with the why, and the why is Jesus Christ, not the buildings, not the committees, not the pastors. It's the why. It's Jesus. And all of the people mentioned, all of us, have to lean in for one reason, because of Jesus. Now, we're going to close. I'm going to see if, if, especially because everything's happening the way it is with the worship band. I'd like Patrick to come and sing a closing for us. And here's the closing. The what is your history, 70 pastors. But the why remains exactly the same. It's Jesus Christ. And what we're seeking is an Acts chapter 2 experience, a fresh wind, fresh fire. You need fresh wind and fresh fire because of the lives you're facing. You need the fresh wind and fresh fire because that's the fellowship of Jesus Christ. I need the fresh wind and fresh fire because it's never the same old, same old. It's a brand new day and a brand new opportunity. But here's what I want to say. What that church needed, we still need. What that church had, we can still get. The world that needed Jesus back then is the world that needs Jesus just as desperately or maybe even more desperately right now. And the community we serve, theirs was in an area of Jerusalem, in the community that we serve called Mullica Hill, our community needs Jesus as badly as any community has ever needed Jesus. Now, how will they, how will they feel him, get him, know him? Through us. That's, that's, that's the why. And so Patrick's going to sing a song asking the Holy Spirit to fall on us with fresh wind and fresh fire, and then we'll be dismissed. You know, I've been feeling really encouraged from Romans 8 that says the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead also lives in us today. The Holy Spirit brings power so that we can be a witness to others. That's what this song is about. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare your living hope. You pray Tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come fly and fill the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be 
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You are living hope. You pray. Sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the stand together. I'm going to ask Kim and Deb if you'll come forward. And uh, before going out that way this morning, would you come and greet and uh, welcome our new staff members. And now let's do exactly what Patrick said as a closing act of worship. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit to make our purpose in life the why. This one, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Lord, we give you praise. We thank, the, thank you that you include us. Half of the difficulty with getting to the place of the why is we, we can hardly believe that you would want us. But you do. You love everyone in this place with an everlasting love. And if there's anyone here that wants to talk about that, Lord, that's what we're here as a, as a staff people for. They can come to any of us and we'll talk about deepening that relationship of everlasting love. But make our purpose clear on the why, that it's all about Christ. And send us forward in the power of your spirit to do all that we can do and all that you can do. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So come and uh, meet your new staff members and then, and then go out that way after that.